All right, guys, so let's talk about converting a stereo track into a mono track in Pro Tools. All right, so I'm making this video because this is a really common problem that my students tend to have. So I'm pretty sure there's probably some people out there that are also wondering about this topic. So basically what can happen sometimes is you go to create a new track to record to. So Command Shift N to make a new track and then I try to remind my students that if you have one microphone, you're only recording a mono signal, right? So if you have one microphone, it's a mono signal, unless you have, and this is less common, a stereo microphone, right? Um, it's less common in the studio, at least in recording studios. So usually if you're recording one microphone, it's a mono signal, but then sometimes for whatever reason, we end up with a stereo audio track that we're then going to record to. And so sometimes this is a mistake that newbies tend to make to Pro Tools, um, people that are new to recording or sometimes you know if we have someone that's doing on location audio for a film they might have a device that records to stereo but they only plugged one microphone into it so that's a really common way that we also get the same end result that we would then want to fix so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make this mistake on purpose make a stereo track and just so you guys know I was holding command and then using the left and right arrows here to switch between mono and stereo in this window you can also hold command and use the up and down arrows to toggle between different types of tracks so I'm going to create the stereo audio track. All right, so I've created the stereo track and I've recorded audio to it. Um, I didn't want to bore you guys with that. So basically I have this audio here and this is what it looks like when you accidentally record a mono signal to a stereo track. And usually what happens is it does default to having the, the mono signal that actually had content. A lot of times it is on this top track. So this is the quote unquote left channel of my stereo file. Um, in Pro Tools, the left side is always the top half of the track, the right side is always the bottom half of the track when we're talking about stereo tracks, right? So when we talk about stereo tracks, these are essentially two mono audio tracks in one. So it's, it's like we combined two tracks into one track. So the problem with this is if you look at our mix window here, so I just did command equals to switch to my mix window. Um, and if you look at this stereo track here, it's panned so that the left track is all the way to the left and the right one is all the way to the right. And so that's great when you have an actual stereo file, but what happens here is I have this file here that I just recorded, it was myself talking. Um, so it's really exciting, I'm gonna play here in a second, but you'll hear it when I hit play. It's only gonna come out of the left channel, so I'm just gonna hit play so you can hear that. Hit record. And I'm gonna talk just so I have some signal here. And this again is just, so you get the idea. So basically this bottom channel here, my right channel, that one's empty, there's no content there. There was no data coming in, but it still recorded it. So it still created, it still took samples and it still created um, an audio uh, uh, clip, right? It still created an audio file for it. It just doesn't have any amplitude data. It doesn't have any audio content, right? So we're still using data on our computer to create this right channel but um, we don't have any actual audio content there. I hope that kind of clarifies what, what we're looking at here. Um, let me know in the comments below. So that's one way you can handle it, but it's not the most organized, it's not the most clean looking thing ever, right? We still have this awkward extra track that we don't need, and we still have, now we have a whole track that's a stereo track, where unless we make the same mistake again, we, uh, we can't really use it for anything else, right? Unless we wanna do automation and then it's just extra work. So what I like to do, the way that I prefer to fix this issue, I feel like it's more organized, it's more streamlined, it's more efficient, it looks cleaner, it's easier to, to kind of, I don't know, conceptualize and work with, um, at least from my perspective with my brain, the way that it works. So the way that I like to do this is I like to go Command Shift N to create a new track. I'm gonna hit two. So I'm gonna create two tracks here. And then I could hold command and hit the arrows, right, to switch between the different types of tracks and mono or stereo. But I just wanna create two mono audio tracks. So that's the default here. That's what I already have. So I'm just gonna hit enter. So what we essentially are doing is we're gonna split the stereo track into two mono tracks. So I'm gonna drag this down and that splits it out. And now I have two separate tracks. So I can click over here and click on this one that's empty. And once I've moved all the clips that are on that track down like this, I can then easily delete this track and then I just have mono audio tracks to use. So it's, it's simpler, you just have one mono audio track, you can then delete these two tracks, right? And just have this one, it's prettier, it's easier to figure out. I personally think so, at least. So um, that's 
essentially how you do it. But what I like to do is if we're working on a film or working on music, a lot of times this stuff is perfectly timed with the film or is perfectly timed with the other instruments. So you need to preserve the timing. You can't really just drag it around, right? So you don't want to accidentally drag it over on the timeline, right? So even if it's a tiny bit, you don't want to do it. So what I like to do is I like to use my grabber tool and I will click on my clip that I'm going to work on here. And that highlights the whole clip and nothing but the clip, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click there to highlight that. And then what I do is Command C. And then in Pro Tools, we have um, some arrow keys that are mapped out to our letters on the keyboard, basically. So P is an up arrow. And then the semicolon colon key is a down arrow. So what I do is you'll notice it preserves my highlight when I use this type of arrow here. So I will go down a track, and then I will hold Shift, and then go down one more time. And then I can do Command V, and it pastes right down there, and it's exactly in time. So another way to do this is to go to Clip, and then we can go to Time Lock. And you'll notice this little lock icon just appeared on this clip, so it's not on the other one. And now if I try to drag it around in the timeline, it won't let me. It just lets me drag it to different tracks. So if you have it time locked, you can then just drag it down and it's safely going to be, it's safely going to preserve the actual location of the audio file. So that's another way you can do it. And then if you want, you can untime lock this. Or you can leave it time locked. You know, if it's perfectly lined up, why not just leave it time locked? If you leave it time locked, then you have the benefit of if, for example, you're in shuffle mode and you move something, you don't have to worry about it moving the location of that clip if it's later on the track, right? So um, there's some benefits to time locking. Um, the way I tend to do it, though, is I tend to do the copy paste uh, for better or for worse. That's what I tend to do. But once you have everything on this track uh, cleared out onto two separate mono tracks, you can then delete these tracks. So I just right clicked, I hit delete. And now I have everything on one mono track. And that's now I'm kind of at square one where I would be if I had properly uh, recorded to a mono track with my microphone. So that's basically it. That's how I handle that problem. It's also good to know, you know, if you want to split a stereo file out onto two mono tracks for some reason, you can do it that way. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I know it's been very helpful for my students because they do tend to run into this problem very often. So I wanted to share it with you guys. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, please hit the like button, comment, subscribe to my channel, uh, share my videos, you know, all that stuff that people on YouTube love. I would really appreciate it. And if you do want to support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content. So I think that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you for watching. Okay. It's only going to come out of the left channel, right? Uh, left channel right, haha. <laughs>